Thank you for your giving. God bless you. Listen, we have a special treat. I already told you he's the smartest man I know, and you're going to get to find that out. Would you welcome Dr. Darlington Nubuike as he comes to present a message to us this morning? Thank you. Too much pressure, Pastor Bruce. Thank you. Good morning, Bracewood. For my friends and family online, good morning. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this opportunity this morning. I pray, O oh Lord, my God, that you speak to your people. Encourage us with your word this morning, O oh God. Speak through me, Lord God. Teach me also as I speak in the name of Jesus. Well, I titled this message, The Journey to Chapter 5. The Journey to Chapter 5. Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. So what's the other side? The other side is chapter 5. I am taking my text from Mark chapter 4 and Mark chapter 5. All right. Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. He said, we are done with chapter 4. <laughs> now let us journey to chapter 5. So what is in chapter 5? <laughs> None of the disciples knew what was in chapter 5. But Jesus knew what was in chapter 5. Guess who else knew? The devil. Because the devil knew what was on the other side, he didn't want them to get to chapter 5. The devil knew that if he allowed them to get to chapter 5, they would become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. The devil knew that if he allowed them to get to chapter 5, they would do exploits. So he sent a destructive storm to stop them. The storm pounded the boat that the disciples were so shaken. They were so afraid and they thought that they were going to die. But when they called on the name of Jesus, Jesus rebuked the storm and it stopped. Chapter 5 is only a flip of a page away. But the devil wants to get you stuck in chapter 4. You try to flip to the next page, the devil tries to flip it back. It's like an arm wrestling. You're going this way, the devil is going the other way. You're going this way, he's going the other way. Then you say, Jesus, boom. The devil is defeated. That was what the disciples did. They forgot that Jesus was, Jesus was on the boat. And when they said, Jesus, that's all we need to say. Like blind Bartimaeus, he'd been blind all his life. Couldn't get over to the other side. But when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was in town, he said, Jesus. That was all he took. Jesus says in Psalm 50, 15, Come upon me in time of trouble, and I will answer you. Whenever you are in trouble in a storm, I know people are in the greatest storms of their lives today. Whenever you are overwhelmed and you feel that the water is taking over you, shout. He is the name above every other name. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, every knee. That includes the knee of the devil. You know what happened to the disciples? When they said Jesus, he stopped the, the wind and the wave. 
and they got to the other side, to their chapter 5. So what is chapter 5? <laughs> chapter 5 is the next chapter of your life. And it's only a flip of a page away. The devil knows that. And so he is trying to get you stuck in chapter 4. In chapter 4 of Mark, that's where you are right now. We read how Jesus and his disciples were in a boat. They were on a journey to chapter 5. The chapter 5 of their life. It was during that journey to chapter 5 that the devil came to attack. When the devil sees that you are on the journey to your chapter 5, the devil will not let you get there because he knows the plan that God has for you in chapter 5. The devil fought them. The journey to chapter 5 was rough and tough. It was life-threatening. It was full of pain and sorrow and anguish and fear. But they made it to chapter 5. So what happened in chapter 5? Let's share it together. Mark chapter 5. From 1 to 8, the Bible says immediately Jesus got out of the boat in chapter 5. A man with an impure spirit came to meet him. A devil-possessed man. The demon-possessed man. The devil knew that Jesus, Jesus was coming to be a threat to his kingdom. And so he didn't want him to get there. But when Jesus got there, it was the first thing that he met. The devil, the evil-possessed man, the demon-possessed man. And he came to Jesus and said, what do you want from me? Jesus said, shut up and get out of him. And the man was healed. The devil was defeated in chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, 21 to 24. When they, the Bible says, when they crossed over to the other side, when they crossed over to chapter 5, the Bible says a large crowd gathered around him while he was at the, by the lake. Then one synagogue, one man who was a member of the synagogue named Jairus came to Jesus and said, Hey, please, my daughter is dying. Please come and heal my daughter. Jesus said, I will be there in a minute. But by the time Jesus got there, somebody brought message and said, Your daughter is already healed. That was in chapter 5. Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. The devil was defeated. In chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. From verse 20, 25 to 29. He was on the other side. The same time in chapter 5. When they came down from the boat. The Bible said, it says a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years touched his garment. And she was healed. The devil was defeated. In chapter 5. So the devil knew that Jesus was going to drive out demons if he allowed him to get to chapter 5. The devil knew that Jesus would heal the woman with the issue of blood if he allowed him to get to chapter 5. The devil knew that Jesus would raise Jairus' daughter from the dead if he allowed him to get to chapter 5. Pastor Steve and Donna, you know them, right? They were to take a trip to Africa for missions. They had sent for their visas. For some unknown devilish reason, the devil stopped the visa from getting here. And they waited and waited. For three days they waited until finally the visa came and they were about to get to the other side. And when the day came, they left to go to the airport. And while they were checking in their luggage, they discovered that they had left a luggage at home. 
this luggage was an important one that contained their personal effects. He called me on the phone. Dr. Darlington, could you go to my house and get the luggage it's in the living room? I said, okay, I left. I, I didn't even tell anybody because I, there was no time. I was speeding. I was praying, God, don't send a police officer here. I was speeding. I was speeding. And I got to the house. As soon as I was opening the door, he called. He said, don't worry about it. We are about to board. The devil was fighting. He didn't want them to get to chapter 5. Some of us will quit. Some of us who are too spiritual will say, God is telling us something. God is saying, don't go on this trip. This is a sign from God to stay home. But they believed in God. They believed that God told them to get to chapter 5. And guess what? When they got to chapter 5, mind you, they had missed Days of ministration. But one, one of these days that they were there, a young man came to them, knelt before Pastor Steve, and said, Sir, I want you to anoint me for ministry. It was Ray Lewis who said, Before anything great is achieved in your life, your comfort zone must be disturbed. There is victory in chapter 5. There is breakthrough in chapter 5. There is promotion in chapter 5. There is elevation in chapter 5. There is a miracle in chapter 5. The devil knows that. And he doesn't want you to get there. But say, Jesus, and you will get to chapter 5 you will experience prosperity. You will experience your breakthrough. You will experience changes in your circumstances. You will experience promotion in your job. You will change the world. You will be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So when the devil sends storm your way and begins to torment you with sickness and pain and anguish and depression and dejection and rejection and distraction and anxiety and confusion and frustration. Know that he has seen the plan of God in your life in chapter 5. Hear me. If the devil is not bothering you, then you are not a threat to him. If the devil is not bothering you, perhaps there's nothing for you in chapter 5. The disciples were in obedience to Jesus. Remember, he was the one that told them, let us go to the other side. Don't get any ideas. Some people think that when you are battling disease, sickness, or when you are in a storm, maybe you are not in the will of God. This is a lie from the pit of hell. This is a lie from the devil. The disciples were in the will of God. Jesus said to them, let us go. And so they were in the will of Jesus. Going with him to the other side, they still face storm. You can be in the will of God and still face storm. So if you're in a storm right now, child of God, I want you to know that Jesus is aware of it. The devil knows that God's hands are upon you and that God has a plan for your life. So he sends storm your way to discourage you, to stop you, to be an impediment. God said in Isaiah 43, 1 to 2, when you pass through storm, when you pass through waters, I will be with you. And when you go through rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. The devil can bark. The devil cannot bite. Because Jesus is in your boat. He said, even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. For what he is with you. In other words, the plan that God has for your life must come to, to pass. The devil cannot do anything about it. 
When the devil sees that your children are on a trajectory to becoming world changers, when he sees that they are moving forward to be successful people, chief executives of Fortune 500 companies, business owners and entrepreneurs, great doctors and nurses, great lawyers and educators, great engineers and professionals, he tries to stop them. He sends obstacles in their way. He sends storm their way. They begin to rebel. There's rebellion in their lives now. There's disobedience in their lives now. There's laziness in their lives now. There's arrogance in their lives now. There's nonchalance in their lives now. They no longer are interested in the school they have gone to. They no longer want to come home to you. They become prodigal. They become disobedient and recalcitrant. The world has to come up in Jesus' name. Don't give up on that child. Continue to pray for that child. Continue to lift that child up in your prayer. Speak positively into your child's life. God has a plan for that child. The devil knows he's going to chapter 5. If the child is not being disobedient, if the child is not being arrogant, he has no plan in chapter 5. If the devil saw no future in that child, the devil will not bother him, bother her. He is going to chapter 5. She is going to chapter 5. But regardless of what the devil does, regardless of what the devil thinks, the plan of God must prevail. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, For I know the plans I have for you, <laughs> plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope, and a chapter five. Oh, a hope and a future. You are going through a storm right now because you are about to get to your chapter five. I may be speaking to a David today. The devil saw the anointing on David, and he knew that David will become a king when he gets to chapter five. So the enemy sent Saul to begin to kill David, to start to torment David, to start to put David down. But guess what? David ran into the wilderness. He became a wanderer in the wilderness. The journey to chapter 5 was rough, but David got to chapter 5. After he emerged from the storm, he got to chapter 5. He went from being a fugitive in the wilderness to becoming a king in Israel. The devil may have seen the potential in you and what God has planned for you. He doesn't want it to happen. The devil knows that once you graduate from high school or get that degree or pass that professional exam or that get that great job, you will begin to walk on water. And so he comes to stop you so that you will remain in chapter 5 all your life. But I come to testify that chapter 5 is only a flip of a page away. I may be speaking to a Joseph right now. Joseph had a dream as a little boy what he would become when he grew up. He told the dream to his brothers, and devil turned the brothers to headers, and they tried to kill him, tried to smother his dream. Devil sent headers, envious people, to eliminate him. Even his brothers in Christ, his sisters in Christ, not those of you looking at me somewhere else, People will hate you because they see you going to chapter 5 for nothing. They just hate you because they see the blessings of God in your life. The devil knew what Joseph would become when he got there. He made an effort to stop it. He caused his brothers to put him in a pit. They were, that wasn't enough. They sold him to the Ishmaelites. Then they sold him to Potiphar's house. And then he was accused 
of something he did not do. And so he was put in jail. Joseph was in prison, but in the fullness of time, God picked up his case. He flipped the page. He went from being a prisoner to becoming a governor in Egypt. The same land where he was falsely put in prison. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. Your friends are hating you for no reason. They suddenly have become jealous of you. They begin to envy you and begin to gossip about you. There's nothing you do that pleases them anymore. You are dressing well. They say, this guy shows off all the time. You are reading. They say, why do you keep reading all the time? You are singing. They say, you sing too much. Just for no reason, they are envious of you. They are hating you. They are jealous of you. I want you to give praise to God because they have seen that there's something in your chapter 5. They begin to spread false rumors against you just to disparage you. Don't worry about them. It is a sign that something great is happening in your life. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. You may have been put in prison. Those of you watching online, I don't know who I'm speaking to. You may have been put in prison for something you did not do. But hold on. In the fullness of time. God will pick up your case, and you get to your chapter 5. You get from prison to your place of purpose fulfillment. Oh, man, I may be speaking to a Hannah in the house. The devil knew if he allowed Hannah to get to the other side, Hannah will have a son that will be a world changer. Hannah had been married for years, but no child. The devil was happy because the devil knew that what will come out of Hannah's womb will be a threat to his kingdom. The storm was raging. His, her family were mocking her, humiliating her because he, she didn't have a child of her own. But in the fullness of time, Hannah got to chapter 5 of her life. God gave her Samuel. And she was no longer called barren. I don't know who this is for today. You may have been married for years and you don't have a child of your own. People may have mocked you, ridiculed you. You may have been in anguish. You may have gone to many places to seek help, but none seems to be working. Hold on. Your chapter 5 is only a flip of a page away. God will take up your case and you will no longer be called barren. It doesn't matter how old you may be. God did it for Sarah. He did it for Abraham. He will do it for you. I still don't know who I'm talking to today. You may have had many miscarriages in your life. And you are devastated. I want you to know that you will get to chapter 5. The devil knows that the child from, that will come from your womb will be a world changer. And he has come to attack your womb. But hear me today. Your chapter 5 is a flip of page away. Like Hannah and Samuel. When the baby comes. And he will come. He will come. She will come. He will be a game changer. And Flavor will be announcing him. The conqueror, the emperor, the champion, the lion is here. And the devil must give way for the game changer. Who day, who day, who day, who day. I may be speaking to a Moses today. Moses was once royalty, and then he found himself a fugitive in the wilderness. Moses once ate on a king's table with silver spoon, gold spoon, gold table, gold chair. After a while, he found himself eating with the sheep. You may have once eaten on the table, and now you find yourself eating on the ground. Hold on. You may was. You may have once had that corporate job, and now you find yourself frying tacos. Hold on. You may have once had a big house, and now you can't even afford a one-bedroom apartment or efficiency. Hold on. Don't give up. That's what the devil wants you to do, to give up. Your chapter 5 is on the way. Your marriage is under attack, and divorce is looming. Hold on. You have been laid off. 
of your job. Hold on. Your business is failing. Hold on. You are anxious. Hold on. Your children are being tormented by the prince of darkness and the co-host. Hold on. Substance abuse. Hold on. Addiction. Hold on. Gender confusion and prodigality. Hold on. Your chapter 5 is a flip of a page away. You are battling a deadly disease and sickness. Hold on. Don't give up. The caterpillar went through a cocoon and emerged as a butterfly. Joseph went through a prison to become governor. David went through the wilderness and, and emerged as a king. Moses went from eating from the floor and emerged as the leader of God. When I came to the United States of America, I had a problem securing a job that matched my credentials and matched my qualifications. I had attended teacher training college at home. I had attended College of Education, Albany Koku, at home. I had attended the Institute of Management and Technology, Enugu, at home, and other institutions of higher learning at home. I taught school for many years at home before I came here. When I came, I thought that I was just going to get into teaching without interruption. That was not true. To cut the long story short, I discovered that I must get what they call deficiency plan and get training from a recognized teacher's college before I can even teach. My credentials meant nothing. I thought my dream had died on arrival. I could have decided to go back home because I had a return ticket. I took a job at Taco Bell a fast food restaurant. <laughs> My duties were to sweep and hose down the parking lot, empty the trash from the lobby, clean the tables, squeegee the glass windows and doors, clean the bathrooms, mop the floors, clean the, everything that needed to be cleaned. That was my job. I arrived on my first day of work in my brown uniform, pants, brown shirt, and a brown cap given to me the previous evening. I had to clean up before the restaurant opened. So I went to work with a long push broom, squeegee, bottle of glass cleaners, dustpan, toilet plunger. <laughs> Some people eat too much taco, the toilet won't flush. The parking lot was cluttered with paper cups and plastic knives and forks and all manner of discarded oddities. I was charged with making sure the entire place was clean. People drove on burritos and smeared the parking lot. I had to scrub on my knees. Then, at that time, a real hurricane came. It, they call it Hurricane Norma. I don't know who, how many of you were here in 1981. Hurricane Norma. This hurricane produced 21 inches of rain. It devastated Taco Bell where I worked, smashed the windows, and the restaurant closed. And that was my only source of income. I was left without a job. I was faced with the risk of losing my F1 student visa for non tuition payment. I was faced with the risk of being deported for missing two semesters of school. I was faced with the risk of losing my apartment and becoming homeless. Fear gripped me. I remember waking up one morning and my car was gone. I called the police and I thought the car was stolen. I, I said, God, somebody has stolen my car, they'll give me a good one. <laughs> I called the police and they told me the car was impounded. That was the first time I heard the word impounded. It was impounded. I found out that impounded means repossessed. I trekked back and forth from Stella Link, where I lived, to 59 and West Bedford, where the Taco Bell was, every day, back and forth, to work. I thought I was going to die. I wondered why I came to America. Foreign student tuition was so high and most of the time unaffordable. Working at Taco Bell alone was not enough. So I took another job at Pizza Inn. 
and also as a newspaper boy with Houston Post that time. Taco Bell closed at 2 a.m. in the morning, and I had to get to Houston Post by 5 a.m. in the morning so I can put the papers in a plastic bag and tie them up and load them in my boss's truck, and I'll hop in the back of the truck, and he'll be driving around the neighborhoods, and I'll be tossing the newspapers all over the, over the place, messing up the yard. <laughs> I still have the pain to remind myself that I had gone through a journey to chapter 5 in case I forget. And that was 40 years ago, over 40 years ago. The devil knew where God was taking me. And he sent series of storms to stop me. He sent poverty, suffering, hardship, humiliation, pain, disappointment, rejection, humiliation, anguish, discouragement. So when you see me dressing up, I want you to know that I had been on the same Taco Bell uniform 24 hours, 48 days, with the same work uniform for years. The devil kept reminding me that I had a return ticket. But when the fullness of time came, I went from cleaning the parking lot hauling the trash, and throwing newspapers to becoming a certified public school teacher. I received an outstanding teacher award. I was named Teacher of the Year in the United States of America. I became a member of the Principal's Academy. I received the Dean's Excellence Award. I became a professor. I became a faculty senate member. I became a department head. And I became adult Christian education teacher. I became adult ministries pastor and pastoral care pastor. Somebody praise the Lord. The storm experience prepares you for something better and greater in chapter 5. Peter Marshall said, God will not permit any troubles to come upon us unless he has a specific plan by which great blessing can come out of the difficulty. I'm speaking to somebody today. I've come to assure you that the storm will eventually be over as I round up. And you begin to see clearly. You will begin to see a rainbow in the sky. The Bible says in Psalm 35, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. It doesn't matter how long you have traveled on this journey. It doesn't matter how long you've been tormented by the storm of despair, the storm of desolation and misery. The, the, the sky is clouded, but there's always a rainbow. It doesn't matter how long you've been floating. Just as Noah's ark came to rest on Mount Ararat. One day, in the fullness of time, your troubles will rest. Layover is not game over. How do I know? I know because in Isaiah 14, 27, the Bible says, the Lord Almighty has purposed who can thwart him. His hand is stretched out. Who can turn it back? What is your chapter five? Are you believing God for a spouse? Are you believing God for a career? Are you believing God for a fruit of the womb? Are you believing God for a breakthrough financially? Jesus has come to say to you, come, let us go to the other side. The invitation doesn't mean that you will not face a storm. The second verse of Walter, Walter's hymn, William Walter, his hymn says, Through waves and clouds and storms, God gently clears the way, way thou God's time, so shall this night soon and in joyous day. Hear me, the storm is only a setback. The storm is an acronym. I will end with this. The storm is only a setback. It's temporary. It's, you will overcome and you will rebound and God will move you to the other side, to your chapter 5. But you must be certain that Jesus is in your boat. 
If the disciples were able to get to the other side because Jesus was in the boat. <laughs> if Jesus wasn't in your boat, you're all by yourself. In Mark chapter 4, verse 35, the Bible says, at the end of the sermon, <laughs> like today, at the end of the sermon, after he had dismissed the crowd, he says to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Let's put it this way. At the end of this service today, <laughs> after Jesus had dismissed the crowd, the congregation, he asked the 12 with whom he had relationship with to go with him to the other side. Are we going to be part of the congregation that he would dismiss? Or are we going to be part of the 12 that he would say, come with me to chapter 5? You can have a relationship with Jesus today. All you have to do is ask him, and he will take you from chapter 4 to chapter 5. Amen? Yeah. Amen.